if is it nature or is it nurture? I I guess I think it's a little bit of each, but someone once said art is not a thing, it is a way. And I believe that that's really true, that art is a way of thinking about things or looking at things or interpreting things or even taking the time to look at something that that feeds the mind and the heart and the soul. And then it, it gives birth to this urge to create, whether that's through writing or whether it's through painting or drawing or dance. I, I think that exposure to those things as a young child make them more normal. That's that's part of life. So, I definitely do not think that the there's such a thing as an art gene or that art is something that you can trace in your DNA. Because my parents are both artists, that that means I'm going to be an artist. I think it's definitely something that's more taught and part of the environment. And I can think of lots of other artist families and children that have had the same experience that I have. Um, and I think it's just growing up with you know, my moms are everywhere, my dads are everywhere, artists, friends coming over all the time, and just that becomes normal, and having access to all the materials and seeing all this tooth work. And I also think that, you know, my godfather, Mark Fry, for example, instead of buying toys in a lot of situations, um, we would make things, and Mark in, in particular, Mark would like build me dollhouses or little models of things like the Coronado out of foam core or framing materials. So there's little things like that that become the norm that then you're, you have basically no other choice because you, your whole vocabulary is built around art so that tends to be what you want to be around or want to do. Reality. So she grew up just thinking that that's what you do. You go to your space and you make things. Three. And she had access to almost any art material you can imagine from a very young age. When Ellie was growing up, uh, Becky had her studio in the upper portion of the house. Mine was the lower portion because of toxic vapors and fan systems and all that. And there's a lot of time when um, I think Ellie would be in like all the levels of the house and she'd be exposed to drawings, student drawings spread out, her mother's process, she'd be down in the basement, and there would be paints and all kinds of things going on. Um, you know, we, we weren't big on coloring books, obviously, but uh, we, one of the things that she loved to do, we would take, we had a series of cats and a dog, and so we would um, hold the, the, the dog down. Nobody was hurt, okay? But we would hold the dog or the cat down. And then Ellie drew around her so I don't think I was holding this poor cat, pressing the cat down, while Ellie drew her contour, her edge, outside edge, and then uh, painted, painted this at the age of what, four, five? <laughs> and like, there's no date on it because it was just butcher paper, craft paper. But it's a really great rendition of Tammy Faye's cat. So. And we do projects like that all the time. I think when you have a child, you begin to think very carefully about what do I love or what do I believe, what's important enough to want to pass along. And I think for Ellie's dad and, and for me, that that was probably part of um, what we what we did with her. Um, you know, both of us were our uh, very sort of meticulous, exacting uh, worker bees, and so from a young age, it was it was clear that she was probably going to be inheriting that sort of sensibility. Uh, but uh, the sense of play, I think, and giving her wings, it came from all those moments that she first created. When you see one of the first collaborative pieces that the three of us did, which is, uh, it's on Masonite, and, and what I did was, I mean, they had me lay down and traced around me, and then uh, Ellie and I embellished it with glue and drizzles and paint and glass beads and and it's funny because I, I had no sense of when that piece happened. But when I looked on the back, she was only three years old when we were creating that piece together. And now it's fun to look at that piece because you look at that piece and you look at the, the embroidery and so forth that she's doing now. And it, it, you can almost see the beginnings. So that's, that was a delightful surprise in all this. I'm really excited for this show in particular because I think all three of us are not only very different personalities, but we have very, very different 
uh, styles. With the juxtaposition of our work, I think that a lot of really interesting similarities are exposed. And I think that you can tell that those are color and that each of us has a strong connection to color and that we all love bright colors and that that's a main component of our work. I think that all of us um, are really into craftsmanship and that we tend to work long hours on pieces and that we're interested in, in a lot of tiny details. And I think that the third is really um, a shared interest in art history. And particularly, I would say, Renaissance art history. I think my dad and I have both done versions of The Birth of Venus, for example, and uh, my mom has done sort of collaboration uh, pieces that have been inspired by Miriam Shapiro. And I think that, that is, those are kind of the threads that connect all the work. Yeah. The whole sort of what if factor, I think, is something you can see in my in my work. So what if um, the reeds that I see outside in my garden weren't just green? What if they were multicolor and that became the ribbon series? Uh, what if I take some of what I'm feeling and I translate it into these sort of cartoon um, animals, uh, sharks and things with points that embody some of the agitation? Uh, there's a narrative thread there, but it really kind of comes from inside and, and trying to do something with what I'm seeing or do something with what I'm feeling. So there was an edginess for a while, or there was a time when I was working with very photographically real fruits and vegetables and so forth. But the subject really wasn't about a still life and about fruits and vegetables. It was about the whole idea of what's real and what isn't real or what's the lie and what's the truth. So I tend to work things out that way. Recently, I think I noticed how much I love to laugh and how many things I find amusing. So I've, I've always had a fondness for little plastic animals and if they're set up on my kitchen table, in my mind I instantly start to tell little stories. I do have a fondness for craftsmanship, can't help it. I was trained in discipline-based art ed at the U of I. However, I also appreciate uh, ideas very, very much. And so for me, it's a, it's a combination of craft plus idea. Nothing takes the place of time, energy, and just working hard. You have to, you have to shoot thousands of bad photographs before you can get a, a good grasp of what it is you really want to do until you, you can really get your image across, your ideas across. Same thing with drawings. You need to be drawing all the time. You need to be thinking all the time. You need to be doing things, producing all the time. And after you've got hundreds and hundreds of finished pieces, then you look back and you go, wow, I remember when I thought this thing was really great, but I look at it now and it's like, it's really primitive and crude and it doesn't lessen it, but it just shows us how far we've actually need to come that I've de definitely taken for granted the fact that both my parents are artists and I didn't really notice it until college and particularly grad school. Just the advantage of calling my mom or my dad and being able to say, oh, you know, what do you think about this artist and or what do you think about this idea and being able to bounce ideas off of not just one of them but both of them, uh, I think definitely gives me a position of privilege to be able to kind of have those sounding boards all the time. Um, and I think that probably everyone thinks that their parents are great, but I think that my, I continue to be inspired by both of them. I think they're very talented, and I look up to both of them, so, in professionally, so I think that's really special. Probably the person most responsible at a young age was my mother. My mother really wanted to do art, but when she was a young girl, uh, there were only really two paths for women with educations. One was to be a teacher and the other was to be a nurse, although she really loved art and wanted to be in art. So she got me art lessons from a very early age. I can remember being in third or fourth grade and taking art lessons at the Rockford Art Museum in what's now the Burpee Auditorium. So that's where I got my start and then I loved it and just kept doing it. And my painting teacher at the University of Illinois who was Edward Betts, he's a watercolorist, he just made it all a lot of fun. He had a very contagious laugh, and he just encouraged us to keep making things. Oh, that didn't work so well. Well, I guess you should go do five more. And if you if you want to be a creative art person, you just you have to keep making things all the time. 
I wanted to do music, and ever since my mother died, I somehow had it in my head I wanted to be a doctor, which happens to a lot of people. So I didn't really know what my future would, would hold. There were a lot of things I wanted to do. Um, once I went to pre-medicine chemistry biology major, I realized that I did not like having everything be right or wrong, black or white, objective. I much preferred English classes, rhetoric classes, classes where you would read a play and then you would discuss it and interpret it. I was doing some beginning art classes and I found that I felt much more comfortable working harder towards things that didn't have a preconceived, a definite answer. You didn't know what the answer was going to be. Whereas in chemistry classes, everybody was given samples and it didn't matter how you got there, you just had to have the correct answer. And right or wrong, it just seemed like I just could not envision spending a whole lifetime where everything was just going to be right or wrong. Actually, I think Chuck Close, there's a quote attributed to him, and I wish I had looked it up, but it was basically, uh, you don't wait for inspiration. That a lot of artists do, they just sit around and wait for inspiration to come. And he said, no, you just get up and you go to work every day and you just work and work and work. And if inspiration comes, that's a bonus. Otherwise, you just need to just show up, get there, spend time, and just produce work, 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 work. What I love about spending my whole day either making art or working on art education tools is that the time just slips away because I, I'm so passionate about it and I get to work with my hands and I get to be in right brain mode so much of the day. Um, but I also think it's a lot of hard work and I think of, um, there's a quote by Michelangelo that, you know, if people knew how hard I had to work, my mastery wouldn't seem so masterful. So just this idea that, yes, it's fun, but it's also a lot of hard work. I, the advice that I would give to anyone, whether you are somebody who wants to make art or music, or whether you want to write, which is another one of my enduring passions, is you, you just keep doing it. And you should find what you love and then do it endlessly. And when that path dries up or something changes, you find something else that you love and pour yourself into it. I think to the degree that I've been successful in different areas of my life, it's been because I followed that love and that passion. And when you expend energy in those areas, it just comes back to you and rolls over you and takes you someplace new.